Hi there folks, another glorious day. Um, now I know I've covered this chapter before, this is making a flint axe, but it's always good to watch. So, a nice bit of flint here, and um, we'll see if we can find an axe in there. So, next week I'm in the forest, still running a course for a week, and uh, we'll be chopping down a tree with a flint axe. It was good just to get in. Of course, a nice black bit, look. Once we're in there, we can find out what it's capable of. Okay. It's a bit of an awkward shaping on the, on the surface of things. Boy! <laughs> Look at that. That's the stuff, isn't it? Look, I know we're making an axe, right? <laughs> but let's just have a quick stop point. Right? This area here, nice and oval, what we'll do is we'll release an arrowhead flake off of there. Let me show you how that needs to be done. We'll come around the back of it. There, look. And then create a bit of a platform. Even that is a nice flake. And then abrade that to make that into a good condition. What I mean by good condition is if you look here, you see my fingernail can run on that nice and smoothly. So when we hit it, we should be able to get a good clean impact. The way I cast these off, so I'll pop them, get that bolt upright, right, and then just slam straight into the head of that. Okay, so we've we've overrun on that one, look, but that's all right because what you can do is you can just snap that base off. Hey. <laughs> can't win them all. No, you can't win them all. I just thought I'd stop there. So let's run back to this. Hopefully the axe will go better than that flake. A bit of fossil matter right in the middle of it. we'll do is we'll drive drive back this way a little mm -hmm. bit deeper and we'll get underneath that <laughs> okay so what's occurred see right here that sort of like hazy color there what that is is that's um, a thermal floor so that was laying in there anyway but that's just fine I don't mind because the axe can live within here quite easily I think we've got a feature going on there you know what? Hmm. A little spirit. <laughs> With a white that. Mohican. <laughs> it's always great to hear the song of the stone, you know? Flint Church. Right, so that's fairly flat. The problem is him. Mm. And that's coming off in one go. 
<laughs> we ain't messing about with that. So I'm going to come up here, and that's set off. That's that's good news because that's come off at the right angle. I'm going to hit that in the middle and try and come right through. There's a good chance that something will go wrong, but then you never know your luck. Yes, boy. Can't grumble at that. <laughs> no, you can't. So, let's get on to the back of that. Now, the problem, the problem is. So the problem is here. This has got a divot in it, right? So if you try and hit that, you hit all around it, but you can't actually hit the point you want. So the, what we're going to do is we're going to manage the shape of that a little bit. That's a bit better. That's a bit flatter. And this time, I'm going to go on the back of that with this big old soft hammer again. Nice. There's a good flake all by itself. I would have been able to use the axe from the last course because um, we literally, we took a tree down with it and it took a couple of, um, there was a couple of spoiling flakes on it but the axe actually survived and um, there was a, a, lo a lovely young lad and um, he got right enthusiastic so the axe had to stay with him, you know, it's one of them. <laughs> so, talking about that course, mm -hmm. there are still some places on it and um, you can find that, it's called Four Day Stone Age Adventure. And you can find that on my website. You never know your luck, you might win yourself the axe. But at least you'll have a good time. I've got a little dog at my feet. He's... Scott's here recording. And he's not quite sure about all this whacking and packing. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know who I'm talking about, I said Scott, um, look for uh, Sco Biscuit, the Broken Biscuit Repair Shop. He's a good old boy, he's a good friend of mine. <laughs> and we've done courses together in the past. And he's on Instagram. Quite popular as well, ain't you, Scott? How many followers you got? Few. <laughs> enough. You got enough. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Stumbler. Mm. That's the sort of thing that can go on. I knew that was sitting there and I hit it again. We'll get past it. So the issue that's going on is this is so flat we've got to start putting some curve into that and the approach and this approaching edge, approaching edge is very steep I don't think I've ever done such a noisy video <laughs> aeroplanes flying overhead I was silent here before I started doing a video You can see what I'm doing is I'm gently advancing this in this direction so that I can flake through there. But if we thought about where the axe was, this is just still like slightly below the center, so I've got to push it over a bit more. So 
So it doesn't take four days to chop a tree down. So while we're there, what else is going to be going on? Well, we're going to be getting into the river. We're going to be catching fish using nets um, with a little luck. We're going to be using the bark off the tree to make um, nice, um, nice uh, containers. We're going to be flint napping um, to make some arrows. We're going to be making new longbows. We're going to be tanning skins and drying and making jerky and pemmican. And we're going to make an arrangement of traps. And we're going to be eating some wonderful fare along the way. I know I've forgotten to tell you something, because there's always other stuff packed in there. Of course there is. So we'll be adding into that, we'll be adding into some um, some nice wild food foraging. Looking at, tra uh, looking at tracking as far as the subject goes. And um, it's on a piece of land. We're, we're inside this beautiful pit. And um, it's, a, it's a quarry, I think it was dug out several hundred years ago. Um, and now it's lined by just amazing trees. Anyone who's been there is just quite gobsmacked at how amazing this site is. It's got a great big badgers set built into one of the sides, so they keep the heads down during that week a bit. But um, the red deer are moving across the site really nicely. Um, so you see loads of wildlife. Good spot for reptiles as well, isn't it? It's a good spot for reptiles. And um, the other thing we are trying to add in is a few different ways of co uh, cooking things up. You know, um, pit ovens. So we're starting to get somewhere somewhere now. There are a few problems on board, but it's not too bad. Slightly lighter hammer now with a bit more of an organised face. That dog's getting brave down there, Scott. <laughs> if Around that corner, pretty good. Mm, pretty good. Something in the end of the finger there. So, this is a Neolithic style axe I'm making, and um, these were used about well, between five and three and a half thousand years ago. The craftsmen, what they did is they would um, they'd grind these. Nearly always they'd grind them and polish them, polishing it's called. Um, and that can take an astonishingly long time. Now, though, well, we haven't got them here to show you today, the ones that have been done, but Scott is actually one man I know who's actually fully ground several axes out of green stone 
and um, grainstone from the Langdales. He'll be licking his lips at this and thinking, <laughs> God, I wouldn't mind grinding that. <laughs> I think you put a month into one and got a mirror polish on it, didn't you, Scott? Yeah. And learned quite a lot about it on the way. They're all different. <laughs> Well, you'd know more about that than me, because I've only done one or two. And not to the standard that you've done it. That Cornish one was the hardest one. <laughs> cool. Now, quite interestingly enough, what we've got, we've got two opposing hinges, right? And I've seen that situation on real axes before now, and um, that's there, and they ain't coming off, because how do you get to it? I might be able to get in, but um, I'm not that bothered about it. We have to think about what, what is actually happening with his axe. We're going to put it in handle and drop a tree down. There's bloody old Cessna flying around in the sky. <laughs> Lift <Luftwaffe>. off <laughs> Get across there, that was a good one. Obviously I don't want to make this too thin. Because if we get it too thin, that's just going to snap in use anyway. And I might just be cheeky with this one. What I might do is just polish the tip. And sometimes I did that. Mm -hmm. um, it means that the working, working edge is going to be um, much more effective. And they really are much more effective. It takes nearly twice as long to chop a tree down with um, a rough out axe than it does a polished one. You end up chewing the tree down. <laughs> <laughs> Mash for it. Oh, that's the one. There are ways to deal with planes. <laughs> what you do is you get your antler and you lob it at it, right? <laughs> That'll come down. Very ancient form of witchcraft. You know I'm going after that, don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm counting on it. <laughs> it's making me twitches and polish you looking at that. <laughs> yeah, a polisher would be looking at 40 or 50 hours when I look like that. So what the plan is, is to come here and swing around the side of him. And that's still looking, although I've been going across this quite a bit, it still looks feeble. And what that would amount to is it would just collect up and crush even worse. It looks a bit more solid. Getting it on target, isn't it? Get in there. 
It had it away, didn't it? That's the one, right it? back, look. <laughs> it snuck round there. It got the opposable one. Right, that's great. So, that's left a bit of a dent in the axe, so we'll just balance that out. It's always good to have a bit of blood in the camera. Yeah. You know, you're watching something real then. Paid for the axe. <laughs> huh? Paid for the axe. Yeah. <laughs> Feed it before you start, don't you? <laughs> well, you know. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is a nice little flint axe. And um, don't forget, that's going to be used to chop that tree down. And there are um, two or three places available on that course. And it's the last one I'm doing this year, the, th the four day adventure. Um, guess what? I'm glad that I'm going on it because I love it. It's a great course. So if you can do it, if you can swing it, um, I know it's really close notice, like tail end of next week. Um, come and have an adventure. Cheers, thanks for watching.